For many, the 4th of July means gathering around the grill to cook these old American favorites, hamburgers and hot dogs. In fact, the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council, yes, that is a group that exists, estimates that Americans eat about 150 million hot dogs every single Independence Day. That's enough to stretch from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. five times. And then, some people do this. Look at Tony and Thomas now dancing and hopping and popping on a 17 dog. This is the Nathan's Famous Annual Hot Dog Eating Contest. It brings competitive eaters from around the world to see who can gobble up the largest number of hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. The current champion is Joey Chestnut, who holds the record at 74 dogs. That's more than four times the number of hot dogs the average American eats in a year and totals over 12,000 calories. Annual eating competitions aside, hot dogs are a stable and established part of the American culinary landscape, but they are not a fast-growing one. They have come under the critical eye of health authorities in recent years and have been overshadowed by new, healthier food trends. Look, hot dogs aren't necessarily the hot, trendy, food of the day, you know? It's not necessarily a growing category. You know, there's more transparency on how products are made or sources of ingredients, and I think consumers now know the, the significant amount of processing that goes in making hot dogs, and as consumers want to have uh, cleaner products that don't have those type of additives, preservatives. So, in an era of fake meat and health concerns, how can Nathan's secure a future for its humble hot dogs? Hot dogs are a type of sausage which have been part of human cuisine for millennia. Sausage making is even discussed in ancient literature. But hot dogs in their modern form, including the practice of placing them in buns, likely originated in Germany, Austria, or somewhere else in Central Europe, possibly as early as the 1400s. Just look at their name, Frankfurters, a nod to Frankfurt, the German city with a possible claim to inventing hot dogs. When Germans and other Central Europeans immigrated to the U.S. en masse in the 1800s, they brought hot dogs with them. Some of these immigrants founded the most well-known food businesses that we still patronize today. Take Oscar Mayer. Yep, that Oscar Mayer. He immigrated from Germany to the U.S. in 1873 and opened his first shop ten years later. Then there's Theodore Cranin, a Jewish immigrant from Russia who founded Hebrew National in 1905. His hot dogs are made to Jewish kosher guidelines. Notably, they contain no pork. Today, Hebrew National still makes kosher all-beef franks under the slogan, We Answer to a Higher Authority. But the hot dog business that brought us champions like Joey Chestnut, the most relevant for this video, was founded by another European Jewish immigrant. In 1916, a man from what is now Poland named Nathan Handworker opened the first Nathan's hot dog stand on the Coney Island boardwalk. Quick note, Nathan's company legend states that the first hot dog eating contest took place on July 4th of that year when four immigrants competed to see who was the most patriotic. But the actual first recorded contest didn't take place until 1972. This bit of revisionist history aside, handworkers' stand gained considerable popularity. In 1921, Nathan's hired teenager Clara Bow as a waitress. She later became an it girl of 1920s silent films. In 1933, Nathan's served free beer to celebrate the end of Prohibition. And in 1939, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt served Nathan's hot dogs to the King and Queen of England. Over the decades, Nathan's opened up other locations in New York City, including one in Times Square. The company went public in 1968 and started selling hot dogs to grocery stores in 1983. All the while, its annual contest on Coney Island drew crowds as large as 40,000. 
Nathan's is the flavor of New York. And when we mean flavor, we mean in, in all the contexts that um, the experience, the ambiance, the personality, the brand voice, and certainly the flavor of our food all reminds our guests of New York. There have been some rough times over the years. In 1981, the New York Times reported that Nathan's had to shut down 23 locations. The company's shares had fallen that year to $1. The family sold the business to outsiders six years later. And in 2012, Hurricane Sandy forced the closure of the Coney Island location for the first time in nearly a century. Today, Nathan's continues to chug along much as it has for over 100 years. In 2018, the company made $104 million through sales to grocery stores, franchise fees from many of its 276 locations, and royalties from licensed products. That's down slightly from the previous year, but on par with the company's performance over the last five years. So over 100 years after their introduction, hot dogs still retain a comfortable position in American food culture. But in the last decade or so, their reputation has come under fire. Research has linked the consumption of processed meats to cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. And in 2019, reports surfaced that the city of New York plans to phase out the purchase of processed meats in public schools, jails, and other government facilities. Many consumers have become particularly concerned with the chemicals used to make hot dogs and other processed meats, such as nitrates and nitrites. These are chemicals added to processed meat to preserve it and are found in sausages, hot dogs, lunch meats, bacon, and other similar products. Hot dogs without any artificial preservatives make up just over 18% of all dogs sold in grocery stores across the U.S. However, from mid-2018 to mid-2019, sales of those all-natural dogs grew at twice the rate of conventional hot dog sales. Major purveyors like Oscar Mayer have begun to roll out hot dogs that are made with nitrate-rich celery juice or powder, rather than the purified nitrates and nitrites traditionally used. Nathan's has its own version. It sells all-natural, uncured beef franks. The company started selling these in 2018, and sales are negligible, but they are growing. Of course, some research disputes whether these natural dogs are any healthier, and at least some scientists say consumer concerns over nitrates and nitrites might be overblown or misplaced. The rise of plant-based foods also poses a potential challenge to hot dogs. Sales of plant-based hot dogs in grocery store meat departments totaled about $20 million from June 2018 to June 2019, compared with $2.4 billion for the whole hot dog category in the same period. That's a tiny fraction, but as plant-based hamburgers go mainstream at places like Burger King and White Castle, it's possible the same could happen for hot dogs. But that's assuming hot dogs can get or stay on menus in the first place. Hot dogs were on over 18% of restaurant menus in 2008, but that number fell to 15.5% in 2018. It's expected to fall even further in the next few years. The trouble for Nathan's is that the restaurant and grocery industries are extremely competitive, and they are vulnerable to fluctuations in beef prices and shifting consumer preferences. Nathan's is also a rather small player with big competitors who have the resources to better adapt to new trends in food. Nathan's is one of only three of the top 500 restaurant chains in the U.S. to specialize in hot dogs, but the other two have more than double its annual sales. And Nathan's also has to compete with much larger fast food chains, like these three that specialize in hamburgers. Uh, you know, we maybe ate a couple of more hot dogs per capita uh, three or four years ago than we do today. Um, you know, hot dog consumption is, is a normal everyday part of life for uh, a lot of Americans. And, you know, it adds up to 5.6 billion of them consumed every year. So I don't expect that to change anytime soon. In the grocery aisle, Nathan's says it is competing with anyone who sells hot dogs. But its big rivals are brands such as Oscar Mayer, Ballpark, and Hebrew National in terms of sales. Most of them are subsidiaries of large food products companies. Some of these names have struggled. For example, Kraft Heinz took a $15.4 billion write-down of its Oscar Mayer brand in February 2019. Another potential problem for Nathan's, 
Hot dogs are not a category that has seen a great deal of adaptation to evolving consumer tastes. And while gourmet burgers have become common, many chefs or diners in search of a more gourmet hot dog will usually turn to sausage instead. Um, we're seeing a little bit of a shift to appetizer or mini dogs or mini corn dogs, as opposed to if somebody has um, a hot dog on their menu, they're not really doing anything interesting with hot dogs, right? So it's kind of gourmeting up a hot dog. Kind of seems like if you're doing a hot dog, if you're gonna gourmet something, as we're seeing with most of the items that we have on restaurant menus, they're gonna upgrade to a sausage. Some are giving it a shot though. More adventurous chefs are pairing new ingredients with hot dogs, ranging from pimento cheese to seaweed and kimchi. In 2019, a restaurant in Chicago's Omni Hotel took it to an entirely different level. Its $49 hot dog is made of Wagyu beef and garnished with extravagant house-made toppings. For now, companies like Nathan's are sticking with more traditional options. The brand's identity is closely tied to the notion of classic New York comfort food. Hot dogs, hamburgers, and crinkle-cut fries. We are very proud of the fact that we're American comfort cuisine. You get a, a great meal, a very high quality meal that's very flavorful and high value. As consumer demands change, the brand will change. And I think the definition of what American comfort food is, that'll change and morph and grow and we'll grow along with it. Now, does that mean that we're gonna see plant-based hot dogs in Nathan's anytime soon? I don't think that's the case. Uh, guests still love that you know, that same Nathan's recipe, that's still what they come to us for. But as tastes change within the industry, we'll make sure that we're, we're keeping up with those needs. But for being a restaurant in a relatively stagnant category, Nathan's seems to have bucked the trend. The company's revenues have grown from just over $65 million in fiscal year 2012 to nearly $102 million in 2019. Altogether, the company sells its wares at about 78,000 locations, including 63,000 grocery stores, supermarkets, club stores, and other retailers, such as Kroger, Publix, ShopRite, Walmart, Target, Sam's Club, Costco, and BJ's Wholesale Club. It does have plans to grow its restaurant business, which right now makes up the smallest share of its sales. Up until 2003, Nathan's was primarily a small, quick-service restaurant chain mostly confined to the Northeast, with annual sales of about $33 million. But then it began growing its business of selling branded hot dogs and other foods to grocery stores and just about every food service business other than actual restaurants, movie theaters, stadiums, convenience stores, cafeterias, and so on. Now, the company's total sales are more than three times that, even though its restaurant business has not grown much at all in that time. The company makes about 90% of its operating income from selling to stores and food service businesses. The remaining 10% come from its restaurants, the vast majority of which are franchised. It is rolling out an updated design for its restaurants and hired a new head of that business in early 2019. James Walker told CNBC he doesn't think the typical Nathan's customer is clamoring for a plant-based hot dog just yet. What the team at Nathan's would tell you is I was brought on board to really help accelerate the growth of the restaurant division, that restaurant side of the business. Uh, what I would say qualitatively is I see the opportunity for Nathan's um, to rapidly accelerate growth, to be uh, very exciting and have just fantastic potential. Uh, you have to check back in a couple months after I take that enthusiasm, that initial overlook of the brand and the opportunity and begin to put some finite numbers to it. While the hot dog world grapples with changing consumer tastes, one thing remains constant. Nathan's annual Coney Island hot dog eating competition. Maybe one day these dogs will be organic, plant-based, or free of preservatives or nitrates. But until then, our only question is this. Can anyone top 74 dogs in 10 minutes?